buffers are a mixture of either weak acid and conjugate base or weak base and conjugate acid. So for example, the most general example we talk about is that weak acid can dissociate into A minus and H plus, where this HA is the weak acid, which we see over here, and the A minus is the conjugate base. Now we must remember that base is the proton acceptor and acid is the proton donor. So this one is the donor and the base is the acceptor. Now what does conjugate mean? Conjugate simply means corresponding. So if we're talking about a weak acid, it's corresponding base or the conjugate base. Now if we have this weak acid, it dissociates, it loses that H+, it becomes a conjugate base. The conjugate base gains that H+, we get that weak acid again. Now, it can buffers can either be a combination of weak acid and conjugate base, or of weak base and conjugate acid, either or, it does not matter. But most commonly in biochemistry, we see weak acid and conjugate base. Now, what is a buffer? A buffer is a mixture of our weak acid and conjugate base that resists change in pH when small amounts of acid or base are added. But how does a buffer resist change in pH? It's important to remember here what pKa is and what equilibrium is. So near equilibrium, near our equivalence point in a reaction, our concentration of our products is close to our concentration of reactants. And at that equilibrium point, these two concentrations are the same, so essentially they're neutralizing one another. This one's gonna say, okay, I wanna dissociate. Products are gonna say, no, I wanna go back into HA. So it's like a back and forth of just equilibrium. And this is very important to how buffers work because buffers work ideally near this equilibrium point. Now let's say we have our generic, um, our generic equation of weak acid dissociates into H plus and conjugate base, it's a reversible reaction. Now let's break these reaction, uh, reactions into their two parts, the forward and the reverse reaction. In the forward reaction, we go from HA to H plus and A minus. In the reverse reaction, we are going from A minus, H plus, to HA. Now, let's say that these two reactions are near the equilibrium point, so they're going to be neutralizing one another. Now, let's say we're at our, we're near our equilibrium point, the concentrations of products and reactants are very close to one another, and I decide to add acid. I decide to add acid into my solution, and we see that over here. So I have my weak acid, I have my conjugate base, and I decide to add acid. And remember, acid, we denote it with H+, base, we denote it as OH. Now I add this acid, H+, into my solution. What's going to happen? Since it's at equilibrium, it's near equilibrium, the concentrations are equal, and they're neutralizing one another. So my conjugate base, it's going to accept those H+, and convert it into my weak acid. It's essentially neutralizing that excess acid it receives, and it converts it into that weak acid. Now, what's important to note is that buffers cannot accept an unlimited amount of acid or base. They can only accept small amounts. Adding too much, they will not be able to resist change in pH. The pH will change dramatically if we add too much acid or base. So that's important to remember. They work with only a small amount. Another thing to remember is that we are talking about buffers near the equivalence point.
that means there is a certain range where buffers can work. And we'll see why with an example and an explanation, but it's, but it's important to remember that when we're since we're talking about buffers, buffer systems near the equivalence point, because we want the concentrations to be relatively equal, so they're um, so they're continually neutralizing one another. Now over here, we see that buffers have that condition, that condition where they cannot accept um, an unlimited amount of we a bit base or acid and how they only work in a certain range now we see here that we have our ratio of conjugate base and conjugate base and acid our weak acid and this is the range that the buffer system will work now if we take these ratios and we plug it into our henderson hasselbach equation and remember that this part of the equation is essentially a minus over ha and we plug in our values we get ph is equal to pka minus one all we're doing is log of one over ten here we're doing log of ten over one we don't know ph and pka so we get ph is equal to pka minus one ph is equal to pka plus one what does this mean? We must remember what pKa means. Remember that Ka is the same as KEQ, and P means negative log. So this is the same as negative log of Ka. Ka, when we talk about Ka, we're talking about the equivalence point. So we can write this again, and we can say, negative log of KEQ. So KEQ, we know we're talking about equivalence. Remember what I mentioned earlier, that buffer systems work near the equivalence point because we have, a, we have almost an equal concentration of products and reactants and they're actively neutralizing one another. And we need that character. So that is why the pKa of a solution is important and the pKa of a buffer is important. If the pKa of a buffer, for example, is, so let's say the pKa of a buffer is 6, that buffer will only work in a range of plus 1, minus 1. So that buffer would work in a range from 5 to 7. This is what the buffer, this buffer condition means. It means that the buffer will only work near the equivalence point, and the limit is plus or minus one. Once we exceed that limit, our buffer system will no longer be in equilibrium one side of the reaction will favor compared to the other side and the two sides the products and the reactants will not be able to neutralize each other anymore so our range is always plus or minus of the buffer so depending on our solution it is important that we choose the correct buffer if we want to maintain our ph if we have a solution that has a pH of 8, but we choose a buffer with a pH of 2, this buffer would not be able to maintain the pH of 8 because this buffer has a range of 1 to 3. Outside of this range, it's not in equilibrium. The products and reactants will not be able to neutralize one another, and our pH would drastically change. So it's important to choose buffers uh, that are within the plus or minus range of the solution. So here we can see the example of buffers in real life. So in our blood, we have a pH of 7.4. The pKa um, of our buffering system is carbonic acid, and it has a pKa of 6.8. This is a good buffer because remember that our the pKa of our buffer must be in the range of plus or minus one. 
So the range for carbonic acid is 5.8 to 7.8, which makes it a good buffer to maintain the pH of 7.4 of our blood. So how does this work? Well, when we have carbon dioxide in our blood, the carbon dioxide will combine with water to form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is a weak acid that will dissociate into bicarbonate, NH+. This reaction is in equilibrium, so we should see a reverse arrow as well. Now, since this reaction is in equilibrium, near that equilibrium pKa of 6.8 and within this range within this range of 5.8 7.8 the concentrations of product, uh, product and reactant is relatively close so they are able to neutralize one another so if i were to add excess acid into the blood the bicarbonate will gain that h plus from the acid and convert it into carbonic acid if I added extra base, the carbonic acid will gain that base, and then we would get uh, our bicarbonate. So what's important to note over here is that the, the, the pKa of whatever buffer we use must be close to the pH of our solution. Our pH of our solution was 7.4, and our pKa of carbonic acid is 6.8 which gives us the plus or minus one range of 5.8 to 7.8. Within this range, um, we are near equilibrium. We are near that, uh, we're near our KEQ. So the bicarbonate and carbonic acid are able to neutralize one another if excess small amounts of acid or base are added.